What place does theology have in the life of an entrepreneur? That's what we're going to be talking about on today's episode. Stick around. Welcome to Conflicted, the podcast exploring the tension Christian entrepreneurs face, trying to pursue success in business and sacrifice in service to Christ. I'm your host, Sean Tombagahan, and I'm glad to be with you on this journey. So I'm going to nerd out a little bit on this episode, and I really hope you don't check out because this subject is literally one of the most important subjects for the life of a Christian entrepreneur that I could think about. And I'm talking about theology. It's uh, kind of a pet peeve of mine when Christians downplay the importance of theology. Now, I, I grew up as a charismatic Christian kid, right? So when I was a kid, uh, the the church that I went to is just all that I knew. It was word of faith. It was prosperity gospel, tongue talking, running around shouting, like the whole bit. Now I'm not that type of Christian today. You know, my theology has changed like drastically from the church that I went to when I was a kid. But um, I, I'd still consider myself charismatic, or at least a uh, a continuationist and. Uh, a continuationist basically is someone who believes that the gifts and the power of the Spirit are to continue to today. So I, I do believe that, but one of the problems in uh, in a lot of charismatic circles is just like an apathetic attitude toward theology. And yet at the very least, a, a lot of Christians are just di- disinterested with theology. Uh, they, they just don't really care. Um, at worst, I've actually heard Christians who are critical of other Christians who in their mind, uh, put too much of an emphasis on studying doctrine or theology or church history. You know, I've, I've heard Christians accuse other Christians as being legalistic or religious because they're so caught up into biblical doctrine that they're missing the leading of the spirit. And, you know, like my first thought to those people is like, who do you think, inspired the scriptures that we're studying. Uh, 2 Peter 1, 21, talking about scripture, he says, No prophecy was ever produced by the will of men, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one who carried along the prophets who wrote the scriptures. Um, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, he says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So the scriptures are actually breathed out by God. It's a, it's a false dichotomy to try to pit being spirit-led against being theologically led. The, the Holy Spirit is the one who wrote the scriptures from which we get our theology. Now, I, I personally hold to the premise that theology is of utmost importance in the life of every believer, but especially for us as Christian entrepreneurs. Now, some people might be wondering, you know, like, why do you say especially us as entrepreneurs? Why is theology especially important for an entrepreneur? And I'll talk about that, but I want to clear up a few misconceptions um, surrounding theology. Uh, First, a lot of Christians just think it's not that important. Uh, you know, I, I've talked a little bit about my experience as uh, with some charismatic Christians, you know, again, that which, uh, you know, I am one of those. I'm not throwing the stones, but it's not just charismatics. I've noticed like this whole segment of Christians, including Christian entrepreneurs who just like are bored with theology. It's, uh, it's not that they can't understand it or they haven't heard the teaching. It's just not that important to them. And um, oftentimes it appears that they're more entrepreneur than they are Christian, meaning like what they find their primary identity in. You know, I want to talk a little bit about identity. Um, In America, we have a ton of subcultures. A subculture is like, you know, different tribes of people who find uh, a shared identity in certain values. You know, we see this a lot with nowadays like politics, right? I've said for years that uh, I fear that too many Christians have become more American or more Republican or Democrat than they are Christian. Uh, You know, it's like all they do is talk about politics. It floods their social media channels. It's 
just like a major part of who they are and, and how they're known by other people. But it's not just politics. There, there's, again, a ton of subcultures. There's hip-hop culture. There's hipster culture. There's meathead gym rat culture. There's art culture. There's surf culture. There's skateboard culture. I mean, the list goes on. And uh, again, these are just like subsets of people in society that have a set of shared values and, and a shared identity. You know, things that you guys just, you know, we, we all kind of rally around. Uh, as as general interest. Well, entrepreneurship is also a subculture. You know, entrepreneurs have a massive following. We we have our rock star entrepreneurs. You know, we have our entrepreneur conferences. We have our books, our podcasts. You know, kind of like the one you're listening to now. Uh, there's shared vocabulary and a whole set of ideas and values that you see everyone in the entrepreneurship subculture sharing. Right, so you stick around and, and you'll hear kind of people sharing the same ideas and the same even vernacular. And, uh, you know, just thinking about subcultures, there's probably a few that you fit in. You know, I, I know I do. You know, for most people, uh, they, they probably fit in a few subcultures and that's totally fine. It's, it's actually a good thing. You know, it's, it's beautiful to show the diversity of our nation. The problem comes, however, when we treat our Christianity as being on the same level, like being on par with all these other subcultures. See, for the Christian, our religion isn't supposed to be just like an aspect of our life. It is our life. It's it's who we are. Our being united to Christ is like, that's the foundation of who we are. It's the basis for our primary sense of identity. So you, you, we, we might identify as all kinds of different things, but our primary sense of identity is to be found in Christ. So what that means is like everything we do in life, including the activities that might be normal for whatever subcultures we might find ourselves in, all of these things are to be guided by our identity as Christ followers. So like we're Christ followers first, and then from that flows how we interact in society in any of the other kind of subgroups we might find ourselves in. So you know, while we might find ourselves in, in um, several of the world's subcultures, the values and the ideas and the cultural norms and all the things that are associated with those groups, even though they may not be bad or sinful in and of themselves, for us, all of those things are subjected to our first and primary identity as a Christian. So going back to Christian entrepreneurs, the problem comes uh, with with those who are disinterested or bored or apathetic towards theology is when they start to engage in the world, they end up looking more like every other entrepreneur than they do look like Christ, right? We look less and less like Christ. We look more and more just like the world and every other entrepreneur in the world. And so before I go too far uh, in, into this topic, I think it's important for me to, to define what it is I'm talking about when I use the word theology, uh, theology, just the simple definition, is the study of the nature of God. It's it's getting to know who God is, the study of the nature of God. And uh, so, th- you know, I'm going to get a little bit nerdy here, so stick with me. The, the Bible teaches that there's two basic ways God has revealed himself. So if, if theology is the study of who God is, well, how do we know anything about God? Well, that's through how God has revealed himself. And there's two primary ways he's done that. One is uh, called general revelation, and the other is called special revelation. Okay, so those are two kind of like theological terms, general revelation and special revelation. General revelation, that's that's the information that uh, everybody uh, has access to. Right. So it's how God has revealed himself uh, in such a way that like no matter who you are or where your upbringing is, uh, you know certain things about God. You don't need the Bible to know that God exists, for example. You know, we look at creation. We know there's a creator. It doesn't matter who you are, if you're in New York or China or in the African bush, everybody has access to look at creation and know certain things about the creator. Okay, Romans 1 Uh, 19 through 20 says, since what can be known about God is evident among them because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes, that is his eternal power and divine nature 
have been clearly seen since the creation of the world. So he's saying like right there, his eternal power and his divine nature, God's eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world being understood through what he has made. Right? That's general uh, general revelation, being understood through what God made. Uh, as a result, people are without excuse. Again, that's Romans 1, 19 and 20. So, so basically here, Paul's saying that nobody's going to be able to stand before God and say, I didn't know you existed. He made himself known through creation. And so let me, let, let me give you an example. Um, a scientist, right? A, a scientist is someone who just looks at the created world and they come to certain conclusions. Um, the, a, a scientist could study the universe and come to certain conclusions about God. Um, all modern science points to the fact that the universe had a beginning, right? It, it just, it, it, it's not eternal. The universe started at some point. We call it the Big Bang or whatever you might call it, it but the universe began to exist, and, and science confirms this. So, and when I talk about the universe, it's the, like the, the actual definition of the universe is all time, space, and matter. So time, space, and matter, that's what the universe is. So if science points to the fact that the universe had a beginning, that means something caused the universe to exist. It didn't just pop up into being uncaused. You know, everything that begins to exist has a cause. So track with me here. If, if the universe, which again is all time, space, and matter, had a beginning, a, a first cause, then whatever caused the universe to exist is outside of time, space, and matter. So there's this scientist. He's looking at this. He's saying like, okay, the universe had a beginning, um, and I'm just looking at the created world without even looking at a single page of scripture. I could come to the conclusion that the universe came to being by a transcendent, all-powerful, timeless, spaceless, immaterial, and infinite being, right? We call him God, but the point here is that the, the, that's stuff that we can learn about God just from looking at his creation. That's general revelation. Everybody has access to that. Now, special revelation, on the other hand, this is the stuff that we could never know about God unless he chose to reveal these things to us. Okay, so there's general revelation. That's the information we all have access to. But then special revelation is the way God has chosen to reveal certain aspects of himself that we otherwise wouldn't know unless he revealed him in some special way. Things like uh, the Trinity or, you know, the, the existence of angels or heaven and hell or the gospel, right? We don't look at creation and understand the Trinity. Uh, none of these things would be known unless God revealed them in a special way. So then, again, my question is how did God choose to reveal himself and everything we can know about him. We already read it, right? First Peter 1 and 2 Timothy 3, that God revealed himself through scripture, through scripture. And if, my main point is this, if God has gone to the effort, painstaking effort through centuries uh, to reveal himself to us through scripture, he expects us to look at his revelation and, and to draw close to him through that. You know, there, there's a, um, a theologian uh, th that's basically just the person who studies theology. Uh, he died not too long ago in 2017. His name's R.C. Sprawl, and uh, he's extremely helpful uh, in my personal uh, growth. And he wrote a really helpful book called Everyone's a Theologian everyone's a theologian. So we think of theologians as being like the academic people and the, and the people that go really deep in a doctrine. But his book is called Everyone's a Theologian. And it's a it's an introduction to systematic theology. But his basic premise is that theology isn't just reserved for the academics, right? It's not just for the ivory towers and, and uh, you know, college professors. Everyone is a theologian because everybody has a system of beliefs about God. So we can't help but to have theology. Our theology is either good or it's bad. So those of us who give themselves to studying the scriptures, right? The, that's the place where God has chosen to reveal himself. Those of us who do that are more likely to have good theology than those who don't. It's pretty simple, right? So, Bringing this back to why this is so important for Christian entrepreneurs. If, 
if we're not regularly renewing our minds with the scriptures, and if we're not developing a deep sense of good theology, we end up drifting into worldly expressions of how entrepreneurship looks like. And that's not what we're called to. Uh, we'll become ineffective in our witness, and we're uh, ultimately we're going to waste our lives. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. So those of us to whom God blessed to run a business, we've been uh, created for specific good works that God prepared for us to walk in. Now, the better your theology is, or the more clearly you understand who God is and who he's created you to be, the more clear, clearly you're going to see what those good works actually are, right? And, and you'll also see how your business can be a vehicle that propels you towards those good works. Now, I, I believe that theology is especially important for us as Christian entrepreneurs for at least two reasons. Uh, the first reason is because of the increased likelihood of us as entrepreneurs being exposed to the deceitfulness of wealth, power, and influence. You know, if we don't have um, strong theology, we're extremely susceptible to falling into the enemy's tactics. Uh, I, I always think about this in Matthew 13. Jesus, he, he gives a parable of a farmer scattering seed on different types of ground. And he tells us that the, the seed is the word of God and the, the, the different types of ground are different people that uh, are listening to the word of God. And, and he says there's different types of results that happen. And he says about the seed that falls among the thorns, right? The thorns kind of like choke the life out of the seed to where it, it grows up, but it just, it doesn't have any fruit. He says in uh, Matthew 13, he says, um, that's the person who hears the word of God but the worries of this age and the seduction of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Uh, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're constantly bombarded, like all the time, right? I, I, I feel it. I feel the pressure to grow my business and to make more money and to become more profitable. And if we're not careful, if, if we're not constantly renewing our minds with God's word and seeking to know and understand him better, we could end up being like the seed thrown among the thorns and, and just bear no fruit for God. And we're going to stand before him completely empty handed. And, you know, I don't know about you, but for me, I don't want to waste my life in the pursuit of building a successful business. Uh, developing good theology will help us build strong guardrails, right? Think of them as guardrails. A guardrail keeps you from falling into a ditch and good theology acts as a good guardrail that keeps us falling into the ditch or keeps us from falling into the ditch of the seduction of wealth. We're around, we're, we're uh, again, we're always pressured around that seduction of wealth. And, and we've already talked about in other episodes, uh, the, the dangers and the warnings about wealth. Well, theology helps as a guardrail. Now, I'm not saying that those who have the best theology are guaranteed to not be seduced by wealth right? Uh, or that they're going to even live like the most honorable lives before God. You know, we have to remember that Satan probably has better theology than all of us. It's not just about developing good theology. It's about putting that theology into practice. But the point is, you're not going to put it into practice unless you know what it is. You have to develop it. You have to understand it. Um, so that's the first reason why I think for us as Christian entrepreneurs, theology is important is because we have that likelihood of being exposed to the deceitfulness of wealth, power, and influence. And the second reason is because as entrepreneurs, it's likely that we will have a sphere of influence. It's not always the case, but it's likely that we'll have a, a, a larger sphere of influence than the average person. You know, entrepreneurs are more likely to be leaders. Uh, they may have a team of people that are looking to them. They may have a network of clients or referral sources or some sort of reputation in the community. And um, the Apostle Paul, he tells Timothy, check this out in 1 Timothy 4, he says, pay close attention to your life, not just your life. Though. He says, pay close attention to your life and your doctrine or your teaching. 
persevere in these things, for by doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. He doesn't say pay close attention to your life just for your own benefit. He says because you're actually going to save yourself, but you're also your hearers, the people that are, are being influenced or in your sphere of influence. Your theology doesn't just affect you. It affects those who are listening to you. There, there's a close connection between your doctrine and the message that you're conveying to others, even if it's an unspoken message, just the way you live your life. And those of us with uh, greater spheres of influence are going to be held accountable for how we stewarded our influence, how we were managers and, and how we handled our influence. You know, so the bottom line here, brothers and sisters, is we have no excuses. Some entrepreneurs, they say studying the Bible is hard. It's too confusing. It's difficult. But what's funny is like those same people will study their industry and know all kinds of super complex things about growing their business and, and maintaining their business that a lot of people couldn't even wrap their mind around. But they'll say that studying scripture is difficult. And the reason why is because we tend to give ourselves to that which is most important to us. And it's not a matter of how complex it is. It's a matter of not complexity, but priority. How much of a priority is knowing God in your life? So I just want to encourage you to make growing in your understanding of who God is a priority in your life. So I'll, I'll leave you with these two questions just to ask yourself. How much time and energy do you dedicate to learning about God in comparison to the time and energy you spent learning about your business? The second question is, how, if at all, has your theology guided the way you pursue entrepreneurship? So how much time do you spend dedicated to learning and growing in your, in your theology compared to learning and growing in your business? And then how has your theology guided the way you run your business? For those of you who follow me on social media or those who are on the Conflicted Podcast email list, I'd love to hear your answers to those questions. Thanks for sticking around. If you liked this episode, please do me a favor and subscribe, share the podcast with others, and write a review. It only takes a second, and it helps get the word out to more people. Also, if you want to support the podcast financially, please visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Sean Tamba. That's patreon.com forward slash S-E-A-N-T-A-M-B-A. Any amount definitely helps. You can also see the link in the show notes. That's it for today, folks. Thank you, and God bless.